Hello and welcome to part two of a series of videos about um, the first certificate speaking exam. So in the first video we looked at part one of the speaking exam, that's the um, short term giving personal information about yourself. Um, vamos a continuar igual with part one and um, I'm going to give you some more phrases that you can use and some more examples. I'll more or less follow the same format, although I did the last video a week ago and I haven't watched it again. So if it's a bit different, then you'll have to excuse me. Okay, so let's crack on. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, discourse management. Okay. Es la idea de manejar la comunicación eh, y hemos visto ya cómo se puede cambiar, por ejemplo, de dirección. Uno está hablando de un tema, quiere cambiar el tema mientras habla, entonces puede cambiar de dirección. Um, hemos, cambiado, hemos conversado de cómo se termina eh, de hablar, utilizando, por ejemplo, intonación, like I just did. I'm doing it again, I'm, I can't stop now. Every time the intonation goes down, we end the term. Ahora vamos a conversar de intensifiers. So, intensifiers are our way of being enthusiastic. So, let's be enthusiastic with these intensifiers. Where are they? There they are. Right. So, acá tenemos unos intensifiers. Let's drill them. You repeat after me, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then se cuenta del long vowel sound. ¿Cuál es? Absolutely. Say so, yeah, the Absolutely. Absolutely. Really. Con ganas otra vez. Really. Next one. Totally. Where's the syllable stress? That's right. Totally. Oh, oh, totally. Next one. Completely. Repeat that, please. Completely. And finally, seriously. Now, all of these really, oh, sorry, let's do seriously again. Seriously. Where's the syllable stress? Serious, seriously. That's right. So one more time. Absolutely. Really. Totally. Completely. Seriously. Okay, so all of those basically are ways to say very. Okay. Pero con una variedad, en el first certificate estamos buscando eh, que eh, el candidato puede utilizar una variedad de intensifiers, de discourse management markers. Ok. So, les voy a dar unos ejemplos con frases eh, eh, y después vamos a integrarlos en, la, en part one. Normalmente eh, son intensifiers que van con los llamados extreme adjectives. So, I'm absolutely exhausted. Exhausted siendo an extreme adjective. Date cuenta que termina e de not exhausting, sino exhausted cuando uno está hablando de uno mismo. O también se puede utilizar en la forma ing. The exam was absolutely exhausting. That's why I'm absolutely exhausted. ¿Por qué no practicas? I'm absolutely exhausted. The exam was absolutely exhausting. Siguiente. It was really brilliant. It was really brilliant. Or the homophone, the opposite, it was really awful. Why don't you repeat? It was really brilliant. It was really awful. 
Now, totally. Oof. I'm totally confused. No sería por primera vez. Or, the exam was totally confusing. No se olvida del syllable stress. Totally confusing. I'm totally confused. The exam was totally confusing. Well, I have to say, I was completely bored. I was completely bored. Oh, the party was completely boring. The party was completely boring. Te toca a ti. Okay. And the last one. Uh, that hotel is seriously expensive. That hotel is seriously expensive. And I'll be seriously happy when this exam is over. Te toca. Okay. Right, let's move on to the next uh, screen now. Now, ahora vamos a dar algunas frases que se llaman hedging. Okay. Hedging um, es el famoso o la, la manera famosa que tenemos a veces los ingleses, por ejemplo, de no hablar directamente. Okay. Y si ustedes son unos amigos ecuatorianos, serán, eh, se darán cuenta que en Ecuador también, en la sierra sobre todo, hacemos esto bastante. ¿Será que me puede...? Okay. No somos muy directos. En España, por ejemplo, son mucho más directos. ¿Me das, por favor? O oh, ni siquiera, por favor, ¿me das? Okay. Mientras en Ecuador, ¿será que me puede dar o me puede prestar? So this idea of hedging es cuando queremos decir algo, no lo queremos decir directamente porque podría aparecer demasiado directo según el contexto cultural. Eh. Um, y en el caso del FCE, speaking one, es una ventaja poder eh, decir las cosas utilizando ese te la técnica de hedging. Okay? No quiere decir que uno es más educado o menos, simplemente es culturalmente lo que se espera en el inglés cuando no queremos ser demasiado directos. Ok, so let's take a look at some of those hedging phrases. Here they are. Ok. Kind of, sort of. Can you repeat that please? Kind of or sort of. I'm kind of confused. Si quieres pedir una aclaración, por ejemplo. Estoy algo confundido. I'm kind of confused. Or I'm sort of confused. Um, I mean, obviously, um, I can't give a direct answer. I mean, obviously, I can't give a direct uh, answer. Y a veces no es nada obvio, pero decimos, obviously, eh, como para buscar eh, un acuerdo con el interlocutor. Porque si es tan obvio, el interlocutor no puede estar en desacuerdo. Tiene que estar de acuerdo, ¿cierto? Okay. Obviously, that's a difficult question. Bueno, tal vez no, no lo sea, eh, but we want the uh, listener to agree. Um, Presumably, um, I could answer that in different ways. Okay. No es presumido, es presumably. Supongo que. Yeah. Uh, presumably, I could answer that in different ways. En este, en este caso le puse al inicio de la frase. Yeah. Presumably, comma, I could answer that in different ways. As far as I can say, as far as I can say, um, you know, it was uh, an interesting point of view. De lo que yo podría decir, quiere decir que tal vez no estoy en lo correcto o no estoy dando eh, la respuesta definitiva, sino en mi opinión. O sea, me, me estoy dando permiso 
a mí mismo como para equivocarme. ¿eh? As far as I can say, it's not a difficult exam. I mean, it's like, you know, you only have to speak a bit. Like, um, algunos se dan cuenta que like is the hedging uh, phrase of choice of young people. I mean, like, you know, uh, it's like kind of difficult to sort of um, use like, we could say like is osea, okay? I mean, like, um, you know, I'm not sure if I can. Um, quiero decir, o sea, tal vez no sabría decirte. What I'm trying to say is, queremos aclarar algo y al mismo tiempo lo queremos suavizar. What I'm trying to say is, um, although your English is excellent, you could improve. O sea, no te estoy criticando, no te estoy diciendo que no sepas inglés. What I'm trying to say is, your English could be a bit better. Do you know what I mean? También buscando el acuerdo. Do you know what I mean? Then se cuenta, we've got that, that um, linked or joined pronunciation at the beginning of the phrase. J, J, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Practica ahora la frase. Do you know what I mean? Let's repeat all of them and then we'll do a couple of examples. Kind of, sort of, obviously, presumably. As far as I can say, like, what I'm trying to say is, do you know what I mean? Okay, let's have a look at some um, examples. I've got some more FC type questions for you to look at from part one and uh, I'm going to flip between them and the um, discourse management phrases that we wrote down. So let's just have a look. Give me a second just to, oops. Okay, here we go. So, question. Tell me about a popular sport in your country. Okay, I'm going to try and use um, really, and I'm going to use what I'm trying to say. That's really and what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, well, in my country, uh, football's really popular. Um, everybody loves it. I mean, what I'm trying to say is it's the national sport. So, yeah, I'd say football is the one. Okay, let's try another one. Do you enjoy reading? Okay, I'm going to try and use... Uh, absolutely and um, kind of. I'm going to forget which ones I'm using, but if I repeat them, that's not a bad thing either. Okay, so that's I've forgotten already. You see, absolutely and kind of. Okay, so do you enjoy reading? Oh, I absolutely love reading. Um, I read, you know. Uh, lots of different books. Um, I, I kind of think that, you know, reading is probably one of the most important things that, that I do. So, yeah, um, I do enjoy reading. Destaca mencionar eh, que siempre si, si te encuentras y no sabes qué decir, eh, das, repitas la pregunta dos veces, eh. Entonces, the interviewer te dice, do you enjoy reading? Y tú vuelves a repetir, do I enjoy reading? That's tu respuesta. Eh? I absolutely love reading. Yeah? Utilizas tu hedging. I mean, I kind of think reading is one of the most important things you can do. Y vuelves a repetir la pregunta. So, do I enjoy reading? Yes, I love it. Vamos con la siguiente pregunta. What do you, did you most, what did you remember most about primary school? And I'm going to try and use 
seriously. No, um, absolutely, really, totally. I'll try and go in order, I think. And um, um, kind of I've used, obviously, presumably. So that's totally and presumably. What did you remember most about primary school? Um, well, um, I remember that it was totally confusing um, because of, you know, the age that you are at primary school. Um, there's a lot I can't remember, uh, but presumably I can remember, you know, the really most important stuff, like I can remember changing schools. Um, so that's probably the thing that I can most remember. Um, yeah, that I, changing schools. That's probably about it. Okay. Vamos con la siguiente. Do you often go out with family or friends? Uh, this time I'm going to use um, completely and as far as I can say. Do you ever go out with family or friends? Um, I'm not completely sure um, how often I go out with family or friends. Um, as far as I can say, I go out with um, friends once once a month, maybe, and family. Well, I suppose I go out with my family all the time. I've got a wife and kids, so, I mean, we do everything together. And also, my nephew lives near me, and I hang out with him quite often at the weekend. So, yeah, um, once a month with friends and all the time with family. Fíjense cómo vuelvo a resumir, eh, resumir la, la, la pregunta también, eh? cuando voy terminando. Tal vez pueden rebobinar un poco y pueden volver a escuchar. Eh? Como vuelvo a repetir o recast, como se, 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 se llama, recast la pregunta. Okay, let's do the next one. Nearly finished now. Do you, sorry, do you go shopping for fun? Vaya pregunta. Um, I'm going to use seriously and I'm going to use what I'm trying to say is do you go shopping for fun? Um, I don't really like crowds. In fact, I seriously dislike crowds. So I don't always like shopping for fun. Um, I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is I, I like shopping if it's quiet, but I don't like shopping like in a mall at the weekend when it's really, really busy. So do you go shopping for fun? It depends. I, I suppose that's, that's my answer. Okay. And vamos a terminar con, what do you like doing at the weekends? This is an easy one, right? You can say just about anything. Um, I'm going to use totally, and I still need to use like, and do you know what I mean? Could be tough. Let's see what we can do. So that's serious. Did I say seriously? Okay, seriously, and like, do you know what I mean? What do you like doing at the weekends? Um, I like doing, you know, lots of different stuff. Um, like hanging out with my family, um, you know, having fun. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, I also like resting. I mean, you know, like watching TV or um, cooking. I find relaxing. Um, but sometimes you don't you don't always feel like cooking. Do you know what I mean? So you know a variety of stuff. I would say um, nothing too nothing too busy. I like to relax. Okay. 
Ok, ya terminamos. Um, I'm going to stop that share. And I'm going to ask you the questions. Take a minute to answer them. Um, recomiendo que vuelvas a, a escuchar las respuestas mías. También recomiendo que anotan las respuestas o las frases, por lo menos, eh, que tengan ahí a la mano. Entonces, acá tienes un papelito, haces tus apuntes, me contestas a mí y si lo puedes grabar, mejor. Y no se olvidan, si alguien quiere hacer una práctica conmigo, les mando una invitación y hagamos, o sea, lo, lo estoy haciendo porque estoy entre clase y clase y no, y tengo chance, a propósito, solo me quedan cinco minutos, así que debo apurarme, ok, pero si alguien quiere hacer una pequeña práctica, solamente la única requisito, el único requisito es que no les importe que lo grabemos y lo ponemos en mi canal de YouTube. Ok, let's just ask the questions then and you can answer. So, y debe durar tres minutos aproximadamente. Tell me about a popular sport in your country. Okay, thanks. Do you enjoy reading? Thank you. Um, what did you remember most about primary school? Okay, that's fine, thank you. Do you often go out with family or friends? Okay, thank you. Do you go shopping for fun? Fine, thanks. And what do you like doing at the weekends? Okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay, so we finished the second um, video on part one of the speaking. I think maybe we'll do one more on intonation and how to get the most from your answer in terms of your delivery and then we'll move on to part two so hopefully that was useful and see you again next week